In this video, we're looking at some top tips for opening Fusion for maybe not the first time, but one of the first times. If you've used Resolve for a little bit and you're just kind of nervous about jumping into the Fusion page, this video is perfect for you. I'm gonna take you through the very hardest part, the blank page, the very first step, just getting started. My name's Casey and I help content creators learn how to use Fusion. So this is just this is great. This is great. And down in the description, you'll find a link to my free course, the Fusion Survival Guide, which teaches you the top tips for actually getting stuff done in Fusion. Let's jump in. Let's get started, shall we? All right. So here we are in DaVinci Resolve in the edit page, which have a nice little edit here, a little family trip video. And maybe you clicked on this video because you want to add some VFX or, you know, maybe do some fancy graphics for your video. And really kind of to start off, there are really two ways that you kind of start a composition in Fusion. The first would be to take a video from the timeline. So you just kind of be over a clip in the timeline like this and then just switch into Fusion. And that will bring the clip into Fusion to work on. The other thing you could do is in the media pool, you could right click anywhere where it's blank and go down to new Fusion composition. Then you can create a new Fusion composition from scratch. I'll hit create. And then you can just double click on that and that will open here in the Fusion page as kind of a blank comp. Now, what's the difference? Why would you use one versus the other? Generally, if you're doing some kind of visual effect or you're tracking something to a shot, you're kind of using a video that you already have, generally you'll take that from the timeline and the edit page and bring that clip into Fusion. If you're making something from scratch like motion graphics or you know, you're know you creating some art or something like that, some kind of design, you might want to start just kind of with a blank canvas. And that's when you would just make a new Fusion composition. The cool thing about having a Fusion composition here, I'll just make something real quick so we can see what's happening and then I'll explain what the heck I did here in a minute. But let's say this Fusion composition it makes a red background, okay? You can take this Fusion composition here in the media pool and you can drag this down to the timeline and you can use it as kind of its own source clip, right? And so this is great if you have something like a graphic that you want to reuse in various different videos or multiple places in your video. That's kind of what that's for. Versus if I want to add just some text to this shot, or you know, clone something out or do something fancy here, I'd probably just make sure I'm looking at this shot here in the edit page and then switch over to Fusion like this. And now I have access to the shot and I can do all kinds of fanciness. I like to kind of break up the uses of Fusion into basically two categories. You have your visual effects and your motion graphics. Visual effects are doing things that kind of are supposed to look real, things that are changing an image, things that you would think of like using Photoshop for video, It's that kind of thing. So it's cloning things out, it's changing colors of things, it's duplicating stuff that kind of exists in real life. It's adding fire and explosions and kind of putting things into the real world, I guess you would say. Whereas motion graphics is more like graphic design, it's animations, it's doing 3D stuff. It's having words swoop onto the screen and you know change around and that kind of thing. So let's dive into the first kind, which would just be visual effect, just by clicking the Fusion page here and opening up this clip in Fusion. If you're just getting started in Fusion, you probably look at this and go, wow, I don't even understand this interface. What's this box about? And how is that different from this viewer? And what are all these tools? And what is what is even, what is that? Why is that? Why are there little boxes down here? This looks like the most complicated thing I've ever seen. Well, let's walk through this interface for a minute. The first thing you'll probably notice is the viewer. And so up here on the right, we have our video so we can see what's going on. And by default, this is going to be what your end image looks like. So after you're done with everything in Fusion, that's what kind of shows up here. On the left, we have another viewer. And this viewer is a lot like the viewer in the edit page where you can kind of double click on a source clip and kind of preview it here on the left. And then we have our finished product, our timeline viewer here on the right. It's sort of the same idea. The only difference is that in Fusion, you can use either of these viewers to view just a part of your composition or to view the end result. So for instance, I can click on this media in node and hit one on the keyboard and bring this up on the left and I have two viewers now. Now these are gonna be the exact same thing because of some stuff that we'll talk about here in a minute, but it's good to know that there are two viewers and each of these can view any part of your composition or the end result. Down below the viewers, we have the timeline so we can scrub through things. We have the yellow in and out points for our shot. And we have the transport controls where we can play, stop, play it backwards, that kind of thing. And below that, we have the tools. Now, these tools are a little bit different than the tools that you would see in the edit page where you click on a tool and kind of switches the selection mode. These tools actually add a node down to the node graph. 
So these are kind of quick ways to just grab nodes that you need. Now, what the heck is a node? Why, what is that? Well, you can think of nodes like a flowchart. What we're gonna do is adjust this image and we're gonna do that with a series of steps. And we're going to have kind of a little graph of the series of steps that we're taking down here in the nodes. And by default, we have two nodes that we start out with when we open up a clip from the timeline. We have our media in and our media out. And to kind of simplify this, you can think of each of these little boxes, which are called nodes. Each one of these boxes is a node. You can think of each node as having essentially one job. So every time that you need to do a new step in messing with your image or creating something, you need a new node. So this really simple two-step graph here has media in, which has one job, and its job is to grab a piece of media from the timeline, that's this image, and then it connects to our media out node. Our media out node has one job, and that's to put the image back into the timeline. So all of the fanciness that we're going to do is gonna happen in between these nodes, and it's gonna be connected with these little lines. So we're making a flow chart of what's happening to the image. So for instance, if we wanted to color correct this, we could grab this node, which is a color corrector, and grab this and drag this in between the nodes. And I'll just drop this on this little line when it turns blue, like this. And I like to grab this and kind of shake it around and make sure that these connections are actually being connected. And now if I select this node, I can go over to the inspector here, which just shows the controls for whatever I have selected, and I can do some color correction. Of course, this is probably the best color correction you've ever seen, and I know you're jealous. We're really just building a little flow chart of what we want to do here. We're taking the image from the timeline as is, then we're doing some color correction to it, and then we're putting it back on the timeline. So that happens if we go back to the edit page like this. Ooh. <laughs> we see our color corrected image here on the timeline. Now, this has changed a little bit because of my color management settings, but you get the idea. Anything that we do in Fusion for a clip here in the timeline, we don't have to render out and we don't have to convert or anything like that. It's just already happening to that clip in the timeline. Let's make this a little bit less extreme. Maybe we'll add a little bit of contrast. And if we switch over to the edit page, we have that contrast being added here to the timeline. Now, like I said, I have my color management stuff happening. So I'll switch over to color and I'll just turn off my color management nodes here just so we can see it without being confused. So here in Fusion, I have this and maybe I'll turn it really green. And then in the edit page, it's gonna look exactly the same because that's the finished product that's being pumped out of Fusion and back into the timeline. And this is where we can start to see the point of these two viewers, right? Because here on the left, what we've done is we've loaded media in. So we're looking at kind of the result of this first node here in the left viewer. And then this last node is here in the right viewer. I know that because we can see the title here above the viewer. We also have these little indicators here, these little dots. You might have two dots on your system. I have three because I have an external monitor. But whatever dot is white, that's where this node is loaded. And so I can also load this node into the left viewer by selecting it and hitting one on the keyboard. I can also just take a node and just drag it into the viewer like this to preview it. And so now we can see kind of the before and the after of our image. And that's really the main thing in Fusion is that you have a lot of different tools a lot of things that you can do to an image, but it's all based on hooking things up with this little flow chart, which we call the node flow. And what's really neat is you can look at this chart and you can easily tell what's happening to an image without even having to see the image. I can close this up and say, okay, we're grabbing some media from the timeline, then we're color correcting it. And I can see just by looking at this that it has a really big green push, and then we're bringing it back to the timeline. So I would assume that whatever clip we're on is gonna look really green. So I can switch over to edit and in fact, it's really green, right? And then you pretty much just plug the nodes in in whatever order you want. So maybe I want to color correct this green and then I wanna scale it up. I could take this node, which is a transform node, put that in between like this. I'll select this transform and here under size, let's put two for size. This is going to zoom this in to 200%. So if I switch over to the edit page, yep, it's zoomed in 200%. So there's a lot of value in having what you're doing kind of mapped out here in the nodes because you can easily tell what's happening to your shot. So that's kind of the essentials with nodes is that you have this flow chart and you build it kind of in steps like that and you can see all the steps together. So let's make this a little more practical. I'll just delete those middle nodes. Let's say we want to have something like some text that is kind of floating right here. One way you might do that would be just to, first of all, start with a text node like this, grab this third node over, it's called a text plus, and I'll hit one on the keyboard to bring this up on the left viewer. Then we can say, you know, camping 2017. And this text node has one job and it's just to generate text. And of course I can change the size and the color and all that stuff. Let's, I don't know, 
pick a different font, let's say something like this. But one big thing you'll run into is there are no layers in Fusion. There isn't like a layer stack like you might be used to in layer-based compositing programs or photo editing programs, or even on the edit page where, you know, you could grab a title and put this over things. There isn't really a stack of layers of any kind. So how the heck do we put this text over this image. I mean, you can't just like put it over here. You have to hook it up into the flow. Well, again, every node has one job. And so we just need to use a special node for the job of putting something over something else. And so to the right of this second divider is what we call a merge node. If you take this merge node and drag it in, in between these two nodes, just like this, then well, nothing happens. That's because this merge has a couple of different inputs here. And these inputs are color coded. So by default, pretty much everything that we've done so far has this yellow input. That's kind of the main input of a node most of the time. But a merge has two other inputs. It has a blue input, which is the mask input. Just don't worry about that for now. But it also has a green input, which is the foreground input. And so if you mouse over any of these inputs, it'll tell you what it is. This yellow for a merge is the background and the green for the merge is the foreground. So I can take the output, that's this little gray square of the node and plug that into the input of the merge like this. And look what happens. We have the text over our background. And so that's really how you kind of put things over other things inside of Fusion. And again, this still kind of reads like a flowchart. We have our media in, which is our original footage, and then we're putting something over it. What are we putting over it? Well, in the foreground, we have our text. And then the result of that, the image that that makes goes into our media out, and that's what is sent to the timeline. So if we switch to edit, there it is in the timeline, okay? So we could obviously do something like this in the edit page. Why would we do it in Fusion? Well, there are a lot of cool things that you can do with Fusion to animate things and move things around and that kind of thing. But one thing you could do would be to use a tracker. So let's bring up a node that isn't actually in our toolbar here. And you can do that a couple of ways. You could go up to effects in the upper left. And here we have all of the tools that are available in Fusion. And we could go down to tracking and we can use a tracker. A tracker tracks the motion of a shot and lets you kind of stick things to whatever's moving. So this shot has kind of a shaky camera. Let's say we want to kind of paste this text right here and kind of have it move along with the camera like it's floating in the air. Well, one thing we could do is use a planar tracker. We'll grab a planar tracker like this. And planar tracker has one job, and that is to track things. What do we want it to track? Well, we have to put that into the main input, the background, okay? So let's take the output of media in and plug that into the yellow input of the tracker. Now you'll notice something here. You can take a node and you can plug it into multiple different nodes. It doesn't have to just go one place. It can go lots of different places. And so we're pretty much just taking a copy of this original footage and we're putting it into the planar tracker, which means that we're just telling it that's what we want to track. So with the tracker selected, I can bring this up in our first viewer. I'll go back to two viewer mode and hit one on the keyboard to bring this up. I can draw anywhere on the screen that I want it to track. And a planar tracker just tracks like a bunch of points inside of a shape. And so let's just track these trees here, something like this. And now with our planar tracker selected, we can go over to the inspector and we're gonna do a couple things. First thing I'll do is set our reference time like this. And then I'm gonna track this forward with this far right button, track to end like this. And it's going to make a whole bunch of little tracking points and it's going to figure out their movement. And we've tracked everything after frame 279, which is just kind of where I randomly started, but that's okay. I can go back to that reference time. I can also hit go right here, 365, and then track this backwards, track to start. And we're gonna track all of that motion all the way to the start of the shot. And now we have these kind of little green trackers throughout the whole shot. So we can take this tracker and click create planar transform. That will make a new node that we can put in between our text and our merge like this. I'll hold down shift to just put this in there. You can also just click on this connector to disconnect it and then hook it up like this, but it goes in between the text and the planar transform. And now if I play this back, that text will kind of stick to the background as it plays back. So if I take this text and maybe I'll just take the size down a little bit and I'll move this over here to the right, sort of where we tracked. Now I can play this back and it sticks where it's supposed to stick on the shot. And so now if I switch back to the edit page, we have this title, but it's tracked to move along with the shot. Very nice. And so that's a quick way we can add kind of a little title just to a clip in our timeline. If I switch back to Fusion, I can go in here and change it all I want. But before we wrap up, let's just kind of read this. We're starting with our media in. I'll just bring this up in our left viewer. And then we're tracking it. And the planar tracker doesn't really have anything 
that it's outputting. This is just a way to make this planar transform, which is just an effect that you run the text through to make sure it matches that movement. It's actually the same thing as a transform node. It just has animation on it pretty much. So we're taking our original footage and we're putting something over it. What are we putting over it? Well, we're putting over this text and we're running it through a transform that's going to move it in the same way that our background moves. And so we put those together and it looks like this is stuck to the background. Then we're putting it back into the timeline. And now we have our attract shot. So yeah, if you're just getting into fusion, I think this is enough to get dangerous. I would start out just by opening up a shot in fusion, maybe putting a blur on it, something like that. So you just kind of get used to how these nodes work and that you have to select a node and adjust its properties for it to actually do anything and then kind of experience that, hey, it puts it right back into the timeline like that. And from there, just try out some various nodes and try and hook them up and see how things work. And if you're feeling really adventurous, you know, you can put some text over it with a merge node and stylize that text and maybe even track it to the background with the way that we use that tracker. And if you are just getting into Fusion, I would really recommend checking out the Fusion Survival Guide. This is a absolutely free course where we go a little bit more in depth on some kind of need to know tips for working in Fusion and kind of getting used to the interface. And if you get this course, you'll also have a coupon for a discount on our big course, Fusion Zero to Hero, which is all about learning the mindset of a compositor. So not just how to use Fusion, but how to make amazing original things in Fusion. So when you're ready to dive deep into Fusion, Fusion Zero to Hero is the way to go. But for now, if you're just getting started, Fusion Survival Guide. There's a link down in the description. Make sure to check that out. And I'm making all kinds of content for learning Fusion, including this one right here, which you could click on, you know, keep uh, keep on rolling, as they say. As the great Limp Biscuit once said, keep rolling.